Welcome to another episode of Behind the Burner. Today, we are talking about the OG of cooking, the five mother sauces, which is the culmination of a lot of dishes known throughout the world. Randy. Oh, How goes par- it? party. P- 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 pardon my French. Pardon. Oh, chef, pardon. chef Randy. What's up? Can oh, you pardon. name... The five mother sauces, ready, go. Bechamel, velouté, hollandaise, tomato, and espagnol. Yes. Espagnol. Espagnol. All right. So we're going to go ahead and break down these mother sauces. We're going to talk about them, maybe go into a little bit of technique and different ways on how to make some of them and kind of what they're used for. And uh, it's, it's going to be a fun, short, quick episode. And this will help roll into some other episodes and some maybe series that we start. And also, this is... I believe episode nine, and I want to just thank all the listeners for listening. It's really appreciative if you guys could maybe leave a five-star review, like, comment, tell your friends, tell your brother, tell your mom. If you like this podcast, share it with everybody, and we really appreciate that. It helps us out, helps us get traction, and it helps hopefully bring more people into the industry and give them passion into the culinary industry. Honestly, some feedback would just be dope. We just want to hear that you're hearing us. You know what I mean? Maybe give us some topics that you want to hear on future episodes. So go to BehindTheBurnerPodcast.com, figure out what you're listening to, what app you're using, send us an email at contact at BehindTheBurnerPodcast.com, and yeah, we'd love to hear from you. So let's get after it. Hell yes. Let's do it. So, five mother sauces. Yes. Which one do you want to start with? Hollandaise. Hollandaise. Sauce. So, so a hollandaise is... A hot mayonnaise, (laughs) basically. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say it. I wasn't going to say it like that, but that's awesome. But yes, it actually, it's an emulsification of Egg yolk, clarified butter. Pretty much. It's a hot mayonnaise. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not super technical there, chef. <laughs> but yes, it is a hot mayonnaise. <laughs> it's just so <laughs> I just can't. Uh, oh, hot <laughs> That's awesome. This is great. Oh, this is a great start to the episode. So, hollandaise is egg yolk, butter, usually clarified, with some acid to cut the fat from the butter and the yolks and to create a sauce there's different ways to do it you know and you're emulsifying the two together to make a creamy delicious amazing sauce and it's a mother sauce because it can be used for bases for other sauce like bordelaise fuck bernays thank you bordelaise is damn it yeah i know i'm slightly challenged okay just just (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> all right yes <laughs> bernays it's a tarragon reduction added to the hollandaise and it's good for fish and steak i feel like i just had a great idea for a sticker i just really want to just say hot mayonnaise on a sticker you know what i mean <laughs> just Maybe. hashtag hot mayonnaise D- that would be <laughs> 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 we could totally start that trend that's awesome I'm down for that. Yeah, that shit's fucking it. awesome. Cool. All right. Um, so <laughs> to I be actually, continued. Yeah. Obviously. Stickers later. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Hundred percent. Want that on a t-shirt. Anyways, um, so I actually make a uh, variation of hollandaise every day. Um, it's called uh, Bernays. Um, with it's a tarragon and shallot reduction, and then we fold more tarragon into it, and it's fucking delicious. So good. It is super easy to make it way too thick, and um, sometimes we do have to water it down, and also it's a bitch to hold oh absolutely yeah it has to be on time as control and um there's no way of like saving it using it for later you know what i mean you have to fucking use it that day or else it's just it'll break super fast oh absolutely and a lot of ways that it's made too like you're you're taking old uh not old egg yolks and butter and you're tempering the egg yolks and you're slowly whipping in the butter into the egg yolks to create a sauce with maybe you're going to add some flavoring. So like, you know, of course, salt, you're going to do maybe some Tabasco, some some Worcestershire, some lemon juice, maybe some apple cider vinegar, depending on what you're doing and who's 
doing it and what they like. Maybe a little paprika. To, you know, it's all different types of things, right? Honestly, after where I'm at today, um, seeing how they make the Bernays at work, um, I can't go back any other way. Is um, it in the RoboCoop? No. Um, we just use a giant, massive, like... Uh, double boiler over a rondo. We actually have to make like three to four gallons of Bernays a day. Really? Three to four gallons, dude. And uh, you don't actually, you don't use a RoboCoop? No, no. Like we literally have to use like we have to get um, clarified butter in by like the half gallon, and we use about like four of those. Like it's a shitload of Bernays a day. Every single steak that goes out gets the side of Bernays. Who's whisking that? Uh, my brother guy. Jesus. Yeah. And he's just a monster at it. Hmm. And um, he actually adds a, we actually add a little bit of uh, Dijon to it. Oh, yeah. Dude, it just changes. That's definitely a hot mayonnaise. Dude, dude it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, I bet. Oh, uh, man. The funny thing is I uh, went through a technical high school and um, I actually was assigned to Dish Pit the day that uh, they were going over holidays and stuff like that. So I actually didn't get to learn how to make a holidays. Which is annoying because, like, out of my entire graduating class, I'm still the only one that cooks. Yeah, like, I'm crazy. the only one that actually still cooks for a living. But you're a beast at it, so yeah. it makes sense. I try to be. Plus, you're covered in tattoos. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, mostly cooking related. Yeah. Um. Funny thing is, I learned how to make a hollandaise sauce about like maybe two years after I graduated high school. I was like 18, 19 at the time, and uh, I was actually uh, at this seafood restaurant in. Uh, historical mystic connecticut the executive was like out and uh, coming in later and uh, we were doing brunch and the sous chef comes over and he's like hey so i don't know how to make a hollandaise i'm like aren't you the fucking sous chef like how do you not know how to make a hollandaise and he was just like i don't know and then i was just like fine whatever give me like two minutes i went downstairs and i just googled how to make a hollandaise sauce and i watched a youtube video i think we talked about this on this last episode yeah i think so maybe yeah yeah I remember, yeah. I made a hollandaise on YouTube because of YouTube. Yeah, I mean, I I just watch people do it, and then I try, and I don't do well, and, and I, you know, you start with like one or two yolks, and you use the butter, and you do it, and you keep trying and keep going, and but it's it's kind of people say it's an art, but there's so many different ways to do it nowadays. It's kind of crazy. I've seen people do it, like you said, a double boiler. You're tempering the egg, slowly whisking in the whipping in the uh the butter and then you know maybe a little bit of water and a little bit of you know to kind of to get the right consistency i've seen people do it straight onto a flat top in a bowl i've seen people do it on a broiler i've done i've done it on a grill multiple times it's yeah. so fucking i've also seen people do it in a robo coop no yeah. so they they you know doing it in a blender is kind of tricky because if you um blend it too fast and it'll break easy Super quick. Yeah, I think that's why the RoboCoop is good because the blade is a little bit slower. Yeah, a little bit than a, a, like a Vitamix. But I've seen people do it in a Vitamix. I've seen people do it in a RoboCoop. You just got to make sure that butter is right off the grill or right off the uh, burner, but it's not like boiling or anything, or because you don't want to burn the fat in the right. And so yeah, um, one little tip trick I do have. I know a lot of like restaurants and stuff like that don't have like a RoboCoop. Just because, like, they're like fifteen hundred dollars for yeah. that friggin' thing. Yeah, um, they're the the amount of costs some of these items are in the kitchen and just blows my mind. Nuts. Yeah, I've had to get a few quotes for like all new equipment um, at my current job, and I'm like, oh my god, Buffalo Chopper. It's a it's a blade that's vertical, and it spins and it chops things up. Ten grand. Ten grand. I actually have a story about a buffalo chopper. Um, a, a deli slicer, ten grand. Deli I mean, there's slicer. some that are like less, and but they're smaller. You know, you want a bigger blade for some things. You know, and then there's the automatic ones. I think maybe those are the ten grand ones, but it's it's expensive. That's so. a car. Yeah, that's a used car. Yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah, but uh, fucking. Yeah, um, one little tidbit trick that I have if you don't have a Roku just because they're so expensive. Um, I know it's a fucking pain in the ass to like try and whisk and then hold the bowl still and then like fucking like submerge the fucking butter and everything like that. And you're just like, you can't, don't have three hands. So what I do is I take a wet towel and I like form it into a circle and I set the bowl on top so it just holds still so I can whisk and uh, temper in the butter at the same time. Yep. Yeah, super easy. Yeah, I do that with the, if, did you, 
Bo- double boiler? Yeah. Yeah. I just lay it into the pot and then put the bowl on. Well, I mean, like, once you take it out of the uh, double boiler, because, like, it's super fucking fast to scramble the eggs. Oh, uh, yeah. It, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, yeah. cold. Yeah. Yeah. Back and forth. Yeah. Hot mayonnaise. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag hot mayonnaise. Hashtag hot mayonnaise. But hollandaise, right? If you've ever had eggs benedicts, that's the sauce on top of the eggs. It's delicious. It, it's it's oh my god, I, I don't know. I love hollandaise. So do I. I could drink Bernays is good, right? It's a little bit more tangier, herby, good for fish and steak. And there's <laughs> you ever do a sauce pal wa? <laughs> no chef. Sauce pal wa is actually a uh, mint uh, hollandaise, huh. and it's delicious on lamb. Yeah. Oh man, dude, I bet. Fuck. Um. One of my chefs uh, made a smoked tomato hollandaise. Oh, my God. It was so good. There's so many different things you can do with hollandaise. That's why it's a mother sauce. Um, I mean, there's not much more we could go over. I mean, we could really go into detail on two egg yolks, flavor it, salt, Worcestershire, Tabasco. You add Worcestershire to your hollandaise. I do. Yeah. And you, you... a little bit of lemon juice, and you're you're kind of seasoning the egg yolks, and you're cooking it over the double boiler. You don't want to burn them. You don't want to get them curdled. You're kind of moving them to right. You're moving them back and forth, to adding air. You're and you're also preventing it from sitting and burning from the double boiler. Maybe sometimes you bring it off, bring it back, bring it off. You make sure the butter is already clarified and it's hot and it's ready to go. Once the eggs start streaming, then you're slowly, you know, some, you know. Ask somebody to help you, and they can pour the butter in. Cause it it's a it's a pain to hold the bowl, whisk, and pour the butter, and then keep it at a consistent stream, right? And you can add little bits of water if you're getting too thick to thin it out. And then you're gonna hold it in a was a bain marie or on a double boiler, maybe not a double boiler, but something low temp, maybe in a thermostat. Oh, we th- hold ours in thermoses. Yeah, thermoses, not thermostat. Damn, I am challenged. My yeah. God. Yeah, it's actually Thermos brand too. So, and then because it's not cooked above 165, it needs to go on time as control right away. Pretty much from the moment you start it. Time as control ends at 135, Chef. What? You said 165. No, but certain foods have to be cooked to a certain temp is what I'm meaning. Is eggs 135? No, uh, hot holding. Yes. So you got to cook the food to the temp and then hold it. Yes. Right? Am I wrong? No. Okay. Because you technically get, you know. No. Okay. You cook the food to the temp it's supposed to be, and then you hold it at 135. You know what I was just thinking? Would a creme brulee be a baked hollandaise? Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, essentially a creme it's anglaise. A custard. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's the same fucking concept. I mean, not, I mean, I don't put, I mean, it's cream and... Egg yolks. Egg yolks. And There's no temper it in there. Yeah, but it's not an emulsification. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, I mean, have you ever made a creme anglaise? No, but creme I've made anglaise. creme brulee. Yeah, I mean, it, that's what a creme anglaise is. Oh, well, fuck. Yeah, so I don't know these terms like you do. Yeah. So I mean, basically, a uh, creme brulee. You're tempering a, the eggs with milk. It's some sort of fat. I guess so. Yeah, milk is fat. Well, I mean, it's heavy cream, but same thing. Yeah, yeah. from the teat of a cow. Yeah. Yeah. Cow teats. Yeah. Hashtag. Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag hot mayonnaise. But, yeah, so you want to make sure, because, like, if you're you're making a hollandaise, you're not, I don't think those eggs are going to be, like, they're not going to get to that certain temp. They're always going to be inside the danger zone. You're taking them from most of the time. Also, make sure you don't go straight from the cooler. You want to let your, your uh, eggs rest a little bit to room temp before you start your uh, hollandaise. But you're going to be in the danger zone probably the whole time. So when you start it, you should put it four on hours. timer's control. So you have four hours. So if you have an eight-hour shift, you got to do two batches, people. Don't try to stretch it and be stupid and get people sick. You ever have the health department come in at like 9 o'clock? No. Luckily, they come right before the event starts. Same. Yeah. But um, I don't know why, but our health inspector just likes hanging out and just watching. I don't know why. Ours likes to come in like four or five people, and they try to bang out a shit ton of permits. Uh, Yeah, we have like 164 permits every year, so they come in permit everything it's absolutely insane yes <laughs> and then you're trying to like get all your shit done and then you have to like follow them around and then you're just like i have shit to do and they're just like no 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 no, no 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 that's what delegation is for you delegate yeah. all the shit you need to do and then you're able to be there to walk them around and then when they're like hey what is this and you're like oh that's for family meal and then, no i'm just kidding but yeah i've right. never actually had the health department actually come in and be like oh is this family meal like well, uh, yeah, but I've had to walk 
I mean, I've walked, I think, 16 permits in one day with one health inspector, and they ask questions about stuff. Yeah, I mean, for me, as soon as, like, the health department, like, we get a rumor of the health department, all that shit goes in the trash immediately. Yeah, that sounds, like, wrong, but you do you, boo-boo. Yeah. Anyway, I think we should move on from Hollandaise to the next one. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Oh, yeah. Since we were oh. talking about teats from a cow, what is a bechamel, chef? Uh, so it's a roux with cream. What kind of roux? A uh, roux's uh, butter and flour. It's a white roux. You're a white roux. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, chef? Well, it's a white roux with milk. Yeah, pretty much. It's like a thickened milk with a little seasoning. Yeah. What's that? What's that French term for the onion and clove and bay leaf? Onion, clove, bay leaf. Well, you take the bay leaf and then you take the clove and then you stick it to the half onion and then you simmer your milk in that. What the fuck are you? Talking There's a French term for it. I have no fucking idea. Oh my god. Okay. I mean, it's gonna I bother from, me now. Is that some sort of form of sachet? Yes. Like, you just stick cloves in an onion like it's a ham? So you hold the bay leaf into the onion with the clove, and then you put all of that into the roux and milk mixture to simmer. That sounds like some psychopath shit. And then you just take it out. It's like traditional. Oh my God, dude, really? I thought you were the traditional French guy. Yeah, well, I mean, sometimes I'm not traditional. Uh, Yeah, I mean, you sit there and Google that. Good for you. Good for you. What are you talking about? I don't know. Onion pique. Onion pique. Is a French culinary term which literally means pricked onion. It is done by <laughs> pricking the whole and peeled onion with a bay leaf using a whole clove as a tack. I got an onion you can prick. This prickling is done to add flavor to bechamel sauce and soups. Damn. I, I taught you something there, Chef? Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, a bechamel is... Amazing. I love bechamel. It's the base for mac and cheese. Do you know it, what a cheese sauce is called? Yeah, Mornay. Yeah. 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 But it's also a base for lasagna. Lasagna? Lasagna. I do a ricotta bechamel. Dude, so. have you been to the bacon bar? Maybe. On Rancho? Bacon bar, bacon bar, bacon bar. Bro, if you, you'd, you've known if you'd been there. It's like Rancho and Cheyenne. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, that's closed. What? Yeah. When did that happen? Uh, Had to have been during the pa- right after the pandemic. Yeah, actually, I was actually getting a uh, flat tire, um, fucking fixed, and uh, the bacon bar was right next door. So I just walked over there, had a couple drinks, and I came back. And they were just like, "Yeah, um, all of our drinks are like half off because uh, we're closing in like three days." Fuck. Yeah. Dude. So it's like some Mexican joint now. What the f- yeah. fuck? That's sad. Yeah. I was about to say they make the best bacon fucking lasagna I've ever had. Yeah. That's sad they left. And their bacon-wrapped jalapeno poppers. Fuck. Yeah. Anyway, well, I'll stop talking about them because they're not there anymore. <laughs> Depressing. But yeah, so bechamel would be used like lasagna. You know, you layer you layer the, the uh, what is it, Bol- bolognese down, the, then the sheet of lasagna, a little bit more bolognese, and then some bechamel and some, maybe some parmesan, some more. You just layer that bad boy, right? Uh, I mean, I had some mozzarella to it, but... Yeah, some people do ricotta. I mean, I do ricotta bechamel, so... Delicious. Yeah. So that would be a ricotta mornay. Do you know what the measurements are for an appropriate bechamel? Seven. I don't fucking know. You don't know? I think it's like a pound of roux to a gallon or some shit like that. Yeah, it's something like that. But usually when you make a roux, it's equal parts butter to flour, and then you use your liquid, you kind of just gauge it, but... You want to cook out the roux a little bit, not too high, not too low, because you don't want it to burn and become bitter and or get too dark. Also, you 100% can taste a scorched pot. Oh, absolutely. There's no getting rid of that. Yeah, you scorch the bottom of the pot, you're done. Start over. Yeah. But yeah, so you're going to go slow. You're going to cook the roux out, and then you're going to slowly add in your liquid. And this is going to be the basis probably for the... Espanol and the velute. It's just a little bit different on the roux and then the, than the liquid, right? So this one's milk. The other ones are stock based and dark roux and white roux. Yeah. What are you laughing at? I don't know. You just say you just keep saying milk, and I just thought of like milk, milk, lemonade around that corner. If I just made. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that song, Badger, 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 Mushroom, Mushroom, Mushroom. Yeah, I saw that on uh, your Instagram. Yeah. So dumb. So amazing. Have you not seen that like? 10 years ago? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just want to make sure. I should 
It was. I think that was like funnyjunk.com. Something like that. Yeah. Or like Newgrounds or some shit. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Fucking off topic. Anyways, bechamel. Uh, Mornay sauce is a big one. Uh, I use it as a base for my uh, sausage gravy if I'm going to do biscuits and gravy. You know what I mean? Bechamel. <laughs> so, anyway. Bechamel. It's usually got onion, bay leaf, clove, nutmeg. Somewhat. <sighs> depending. And... and <sighs> And then you can add in like pepper and then cheddar for a cheddar mornay and other cheeses, right? But it's a mother sauce. You can make so much stuff. What's, uh, I mean, Alfredo is a, t- technically a bechamel with just a shit ton of Parmesan and butter. I mean, I had white wine of mine, but that's just me. I'm just a fancy bitch. So. White wine? Yeah, white wine. To your bechamel? Yeah, to if I make an Alfredo, you know what I mean? Oh, to an Alfredo? Yeah. Mm. And I had cream cheese. Oh, and Cooper American. Hmm. That's, yeah, it's how you get a glossy... Interesting. Alfredo, you put Cooper American in it. You'll have to make that for me. Yeah. Because I usually just do like... It's fucking tits, bro. <laughs> I don't really make a bechamel, but I use heavy cream and Parmesan and butter. Yeah. That's yeah, it? That's it. Lemon juice, white wine, no. crushed red chilies, garlic. No. No? None of that? That's too fancy for most Americans who love chicken Alfredo. What do you mean? I just... I pull that shit out of my ass. I pull that out of my ass. You like, pull a lot of shit out of your ass, dude. I pull everything out of my ass. It's like my prison pocket. All right, let's go on to uh, velouté, gravies. Do you think we talked enough about bechamel and how we'd make it? Maybe. You, you kind of sort of cut me off there when I was talking about it. Oh, did I? You did, yeah. It's okay. <gasps> Please continue. So, white roux and milk. It's a slow process to make an actual traditional bechamel. You can do shortcuts. There's ways where you start with the roux and then you do the milk and then you get your consistency a little bit... L- um, Thinner than you'd like, and then you'd reduce it with the like onion pick to get the flavor into the milk, and then you take that out when you strain it. Then there's ways to make like a thicker roux. And then you start with your milk, and then you're whisking in the roux into the milk. It's there's so many different ways to do it. Uh, when I was taught in high school, when I was in culinary, um, you want your roux to like actually represent wet sand. That's about probably the best way to put it. And then uh, I add my milk or cream or whatever I'm adding to it um, in steps. Um, be ha- careful with cream because it can break pretty fast if you uh, have it too high of a heat and uh, the milk fat will start separating. Yeah, um, add it in steps because uh, roux is a bitch when it starts getting chunky and sometimes you have to hit it with like the burr mixer or something like that or you have to put it through a, a chinois to uh, get the lumps out. But um, I've done it plenty of times. It happens to all of us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's just some tidbits and all that stuff. Uh, I never really add nutmeg to mine because especially if I'm just making a gravy or something like that, like, I don't know, maybe a traditional bechamel like on like lobster or something like that. You know what I mean? We wouldn't have like nutmeg or something, but yeah, nobody just goes, oh, I'm just making a bechamel. Like that's it. No, like you always add shit to it. Well, it depends where you are, yeah. but yeah. They would make bechamel in the the prep kitchen for all the outlets, and they would use that, and then they would take that from the main kitchen and then build their sauces out of that. Yeah, see? You're still adding stuff to it. Well, yeah, but that crew makes a traditional bechamel, and then it goes to the outlets, and then they use it for what they need it to be. Oh, so you have like a commissary kitchen? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I've done that before. Uh, I worked in a uh, cook chill where we made all the bulk soups and sauces. Whoever was the guy that made all the soups, heavy-handed with the bay, bay leaves. No. Fucking Italian wedding soup. Fucking go to... I, I literally scooped with the ladle into a bowl to give to a guest. Literally like eight bay leaves came out. Jesus. I'm like, what the fuck is this? The corn chowder, the fucking clam chowder, um, the just like chicken noodle soup. But fucking bay leaves, they put it in fucking everything. It was bad. I was like, dude, are you fucking serious? Either... Put it in a fucking cheesecloth and tie it and then put it in there or just don't put it at all. It doesn't make that much of a difference. Oh, man. Man, that's, that's rough. I, we got to talk about that Coke chill at some point and probably a later episode because I still have nightmares about that place. What place? The Coke chill that I worked at. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, soups, big one. Bechamel, great. Fantastic. Yeah. Doing you, with clam chowder, all that shit. Yeah, you can, you can also use a bechamel to make chowders. Chowders. Chowder. Yeah. Yeah. I actually did a tasting where uh, I made a corn chowder and a bechamel, and the chefs asked me, 
did you use your bechamel to make the chowder? And I told them no. And they asked me why. And I told them because this is the way my grandma made the recipe for the corn chowder. And I loved her corn chowder. And they were like, well, oh, 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 you should have used your bechamel, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, this is my grandma's fucking recipe, you fucking prick. But yeah, so, I didn't yeah, say I'll that. tell Granny to go fuck herself. Okay. Yeah. I just said, yes, chef. Thank you, chef. I'll have another. <laughs> chef. So speaking of corn chowder, um, one of the places that I worked at as my first sous chef job, we actually had to do a uh, corn chowder with hush puppies. Such a pain in the ass. Hush puppies are just fucking pancakes in a ball, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah okay. fried pancakes. But um, we actually uh, used made a velouté, which is uh, going into the uh, next sauce. And um, so basically, we yeah. would take an entire case of uh, corn, and uh, we would uh, char one half. It was a kernel, or was it like cob? Uh, cobs, full oh, okay. cobs. All right. We would take half, and then we would char half, and then we would take all the corn. And then we would uh, cut it off the cob, set it aside. Uh, Both the, the char and the un. Well, the we would separate the uh, charred from the um, regular. Okay. And then uh, we would take all the cobs and we would make a corn cob stock. Okay. And then we would take that corn cob stock and then we would take the uh, uncharred corn, throw that in there, and then blend the shit out of it. Uh huh. And that was our base for the uh, velouté. Nice. And then uh, we would make our corn chowder from there, and then we would add roux and all that shit, and then uh, at the end we would add the uh, charred corn into it, so it gave it that like. Color contrast. Fucking delicious. Yeah. That sounds awesome, dude. It was such a fucking process, though. Oh, yeah. Dude. And then, like, I don't know what it was, but, like, my first sous chef job was um, with my mentor. And I don't know why I've, like, done so many different things. And, like, even shrimp, something simple as shrimp cocktail. I would just, like, he would make me do it, like, 5,000 different ways. And then he was just like, how can I take this? And make it more complicated. And that's what he would do. He would just make it the most complicated way possible. And I was just like, why? And he's just like, because it tastes better. Like, like, a, like a Caesar salad and like change it all up. And Dude, I, we used a paddle mixer for our Caesar salad. Like our Caesar dressing. Such a pain in the ass. Like I had to hand grate the Parmesan and everything. I always liked um, when they made that shit table side, to be honest with you. Yeah. With the yolks and the mustard and the anchovies and the garlic and the oil and... Fucking awesome. Giant wooden bowl, yeah. Yep, giant wooden bowl, yep. <laughs> Would a Caesar dressing be a hollandaise? I don't know. Hashtag hot mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Would it? I mean, it's also kind of the start. Like, a lot of that is a start for, like, um, a carpaccio. Yeah. Because <laughs> you get egg yolks and the mustard and uh, Dijon mustard and the chives and the garlic and the shallots and... Dude, everything's just hashtag hot mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that would be room temp mayonnaise. Yeah. That's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like I mean, open, and open a jar of mayonnaise out of the fucking cupboard, and you just scoop that onto a fucking toast. Just put that shit in the microwave. Yeah. Fucking uh, uh, gross. Next time you make grilled cheese, toast your buns with mayonnaise. Yeah, 100%. Just put mayonnaise on one side and put the, the bun down. Because mayonnaise is an emulsification of fats and oils, and it's yeah. delicious. On a, and you add your cheese and your other, and you flip it. Oh man, it's gonna change your grilled cheese. Trust. Every time we try to go to a new sauce, it just comes back to hot mayonnaise every time. Yep. So velouté is white roux chicken stock. Yep. Yep. So same process as the bechamel. You're gonna cook the roux out, and you're gonna slowly whisk in. The chicken stock. You can also use turkey. You can. It's like a white stock. So anything that's low simmered, not too much color. Don't roast your bones. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've even used a uh, fish stock. Yep, dude. Um, a thickened pho broth. Yeah, but wouldn't that be an espanol? No, because it's a. It? It's a darker. It'd be darker. I don't know. Yeah, that might be an espanol. But the the way they cook the 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 pho broth is so like clear and. It almost looks like a chicken broth, but it's a beef broth. Damn, that sounds awesome, though. Anyway, so... We'll talk about that later here in a few minutes. Velouté is pretty easy. We can talk about making stocks, but chicken stock, you really don't need to cook it very long. Um, I would fabricate down the chicken, so I would get a whole chicken. I would cut it down to all of its parts. If you don't know how to do that, there's many videos on YouTube. You go slow, and it's fun, and then you're going to take all those parts, and you're going to put them in, put them with water... You add in some, your mirepoix, your onions, carrots, celery, you know, maybe a uh, sachet of herbs and some peppercorns, some garlic, kind of some whatever you want, really. And you're going to simmer it 
for 45 minutes to an hour and then strain everything out. I mean, you can go a little bit more. If you're in a depth. restaurant, um, I've had chicken stock go for up to like 48 hours before. Um, well, I mean, I there's mean, so many not, different, there's, there's difference between right? I mean, like ramen not, broth. They, they literally take pork bone for tonkatsu, right? And they boil it for sometimes days. And I've seen some places they'll do the, that with the, the, the pork and then they'll do that with the chicken. And then when they come together to make the broth, they'll, they'll do both. No. So it'll, it'll like infuse the chicken and the pork. And it's, there's so many different ways. That's why these things are basis of cooking. Or if you're not in a restaurant, you can just cheat and use some chicken powder like I do. Because, I mean, I'm not going to make chicken stock at home. Why not? Time. It doesn't take that long. I mean, I just pulled a chicken noodle soup out of my ass in like 45 minutes. Yeah, it was a little salty, chef. Uh, she didn't think so. Whatever. It's because you had that cup of water I told your dad into it. <laughs> 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 Yeah, fuck what up. A shit, shut the fuck up. I'll cut that out for you. I don't give a shit. Go for it. Do you, boo boo? Do you? Espanol. Espanol. Um, brown roux, brown stock, right? And tomate. A little bit of tomato. Traditionally, uh, it has tomato. I yeah, mean, but if you're going to add nutmeg to a bechamel, you're going to add tomato to an espanol. Calm down. Chef. Don't don't chef, don't look at me like that. Chef, calm down. Don't look at me like that. When you roast bones for me, I get a bone you can roast. I bet you do. Yeah. I'm gonna just smother it in tomato paste. Hey, yeah. before <laughs> I roast it. You didn't have to go there. That's too much. <laughs> but when you roast bones for a brown stock, I always put tomato paste over the bones so it caramelizes when you're roasting it, and then you boil it. What? Why are you giving me that look, chef? Yeah. How do you make your espanol? Carefully. <laughs> yeah. Um, typically, uh, a lot of people do roast their bones. It actually has a better flavor. But if I'm doing something like a demi and I'm making a brown stock, and then uh, I'll probably just boil off the uh, bones first. So I do a first boil, and then uh, that'll take probably about maybe an hour. And then um, we drain the uh, water so we can get all the uh, dirt and everything off the, the uh, bones and the uh, residual fat. The scum. The scum and all that shit. And then we uh, rinse the bones after with uh, cold water, and then we bring it back up to uh, with cold water. And then we'll have that go for about... Uh, when I was making Bordelais, it was like a three-day process. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always... I usually say you poach your bones first. Yeah. So like oxtail, when I boil oxtail, you, just, you do like a 10-minute fucking hard rolling boil to get out all that impurities and shit then you strain it and then you wash it just like you said so so i mean like um roasting versus uh, poaching there's like two different concepts and everything like that and like two uh variations of your use um so i mean if you're doing something hardcore like a bordelaise or something like that um you're going to want to poach your bones instead of roasting them because if you roast them and then you just cook the absolute shit out you of them. become fucking salty It's going to get bitter and, as fuck. Yeah, it's going to be gross. You know what I mean? So, I mean, there's always that whole, like, what's your actual application? That's what you have to look at when you're starting from the beginning. You have to look at the end product and see what that is. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yep. So. Your demi. Yeah. Well, demi is like the secret uh, sixth sauce. Yeah. But yeah. that's like veal bones, right? Yeah. And and what chicken bones because of the gelatinous gelatin from them, chicken feet. Yeah, uh, chicken feet have a lot of um, gelatin and everything Natural. like that. Yeah, so you you don't roast them, you're boiling them, and you're you're you make a huge fucking batch, and by the time you're done, you got a small little fucking thing of sauce because you're just reducing and reducing and reducing. What a lot of people don't know is uh, that gelatin is actually like really good for your skin and everything like that. But I think a lot of people know that. Um. The funny thing is, like, a lot of, like, people, like, normies what? Um, don't know that um, that raspberry jello that you make uh, is actually made from, like, chicken feet and shit. Because remember that. If you're actually having, like, jello at, like, the buffet or something like that, it's yeah, made from chicken feet. Yeah. 100%. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Gelatin is usually made from fucking gelatin from animals. Yeah. 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 A lot of people do not know that. Yeah. That's why, uh, was it the uh, people who have restrictions on food from their religion? I believe, like, like Muslims, they can't eat, like, jelly uh, or gummy bears or anything with gelatin in it because it's usually made with pork fat. Yep. Yeah. Um, and it's not, you know. Kosher. Co- uh, halal. Halal. Kosher is pretty positive is Jewish. Yeah. And halal is Arabic. We're not Muslim. by any means experts. Yeah. But, um, 
we tr- we tend to be very highly respectful of those kinds of um I got I got the shit chewed out for temping a freaking kosher meal, certified kosher meal yeah. to make sure that it was hot because I um broke the seal. Like I didn't know yeah. starting off. I'm like I got to make sure the fucking food's hot. It, <laughs> like yeah. it's it came in a container that was sealed and it's supposed to be uh microwaved. But we have a combi oven, so we put it in the steamer. It's the same thing. And I tempt it to make sure the chicken was cooked right because we uh, we have to make sure it's safe and cooked all the way through to reheat. And I had no idea. So instead of temping it, they told me when well, I got chewed out, like, what the, you know, the meal was ruined, right? So um, whatever. We just went by time instead of temp because then we know that over time that the food's going to get to the temp. But it doesn't break the seal, so the guest who's having a certified kosher meal can break the seal themselves because that's how it's supposed to be done. Anyway, just nuts. Like a lot of like I've done it a few a uh, few before, and like a lot of places, like they treat it worse than like allergies. Like they are super one hundred percent careful with that shit. Like I've worked in places where like you're not touching the shit, the chef's touching the shit. Like you're gonna fuck it up. So that's just the big thing. Yep. But anyways, uh, Espanol. Espanol. Yeah, we're still on Espanol. Yeah, Espanol. So with the velouté and the bechamel, this one, you're going to cook the roux longer to give it a nuttier flavor and color so that it's a darker roux, not like making a jambalaya gumbo dark, like chocolate dark. I mean, a gumbo is an Espanol, but technically. Yes, it is true. But yeah. most, like, most of the time you don't do... Why do you keep looking at me like that? Oh, this is funny. But yeah, I mean... Um, Traditional stuff, you mostly don't go that dark when no. you're making... Because you go pretty fucking dark when you're making a gumbo. Yeah. Like, super dark. Yeah. And it's easy to burn. And it... Um, I think it's Isaac Tupe Toop in Louisiana. He has a way to make it really fast. But if you don't do it right, it burns really fast, of course. But traditionally... I mean, I've seen chefs uh, bake them in the oven. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what Chef does back, you know. Yeah. But that takes a while, too. But it still takes, like, you go slow. It takes 45 minutes to an hour to get a nice dark roux. Yeah. Just the roux. Think about that. You're sitting there for an hour, slowly, methodically stirring a roux so it doesn't burn and so it gets to the right color to then add a dark stock, which probably took you four to six hours to make. It, yeah, it's time consuming. It is, 100%. And tomatoes. So you want to put tomatoes in the Espanol sauce? I mean, just like tomato sauce, like tomato paste. Like I was saying? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Roasting the bones with the tomato paste? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I've done, when I was at Matt Cook Chill, I uh, made a uh, dark gravy and everything like that, and uh, we had this like insanely huge oven. Like, uh, it was like a fucking Ferris wheel inside the oven. So yeah, like yeah, we yeah. would just put like shelves and shelves and shelves, and we would just throw like these roasting pans just chock full of like tomato paste and bones and they would go for like six hours before we even touched just like put it in the stock pot so yeah espanol delicious nutritious yeah so you are right though that a gumbo is kind of a would you say it's in espanol or is it a break off of the base of an espanol i mean it's a variation that's what it is right yeah you know what I mean? hence that why espanol is a mother sauce yeah but with the gumbo, you know, you got the Holy Trinity, peppers, celery, garlic. I cheat and use Cajun seasoning, but that's just me. You take a lot of shortcuts for a fucking fancy chef, you fucking Yeah, work chef. smarter, not harder. I don't know about that, dude. Dude, I use the fucking pickled garlic, too. Like, I don't chop that shit from hand. P- pickled garlic? All the uh, fucking shit that's in the uh, jars. The chopped garlic? Yeah, the chopped garlic in the water. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I don't fucking chop garlic. Fuck that. What the fuck? What? I'm a bougie bitch. Yeah, dude, I didn't know that about you. Yeah, dude. You've lost some brownie points, Joe. What do you mean I lost some brownie points? Yeah, see, like, I go to the Asian market, and I get those peeled garlic, and I, I chop chopping, them. Chopping, 100% chopping garlic sucks. I mean, if you sm- smash it first, it's not that bad. Yeah, but then, like, that shit gets sticky as fuck. Okay. It's not that bad, dude. Yeah, it is. I don't it know. It is. It's not as bad as rolling fucking chives in a paper towel and slowly cutting them so your chef doesn't throw them away. Yeah. I've seen some shit. I've done some shit. Yeah, I know you have. Yeah. Like uh, my mentor who used to throw chives at me and maybe hand mince garlic uses the same garlic at home. He's just like, fuck that. I ain't doing that. Yeah. Sad. Yeah, dude. Like It just doesn't taste the same. Like if you're making like a Caesar dressing, fine. Then yeah, I'll do like hand mince garlic. But I mean like I just made chicken noodle soup. Like I'm not going to sit there and fucking. You're going to put that old fucking preservative 
shitty fucking manufactured chopped garlic into your fucking shitty chicken stock? Yep. With chicken powder. I didn't make chicken stock. I yeah, I saw powder. you got that caldo del pollo. Yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Fucking. Shit's the best. You should have just got a whole chicken and done it right. How about no? How about yes? Yeah. It take. 45 minutes to an hour to do it. Yeah, well, that's... An it took you about 45 minutes to an hour <laughs> in your fucking towel to do that soup. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm all about making it at home and making it right at home. Because where I'm at, we use chicken powder and beef powder or beef base and chicken base and vegetable base and lobster base and fucking shit out of bags. So I guess it's different because you're doing that at work and I'm... Not. Not. No. That makes sense. Yeah. Sorry. Well, I mean, like when you cook all day, <laughs> like the last thing you want to do is go home and cook. See, I'm a little different. I, I mean, I like cooking. I do too, but I mean, like it gets old. I don't know. I like it. But, I don't know. But you do like fancy shit. You do fancier stuff all the time. I don't. Yeah. So when I go home and I want to cook, I I make like a beautiful creamy like creme fraiche mashed potatoes with some chives. I don't know, man. Fucking. What do you got there? I um, fucking searing some chicken thighs. Oh yeah. Do you know how much I got shat on for that episode of South Park? <laughs> so much. Because his name's Randy. You're gonna, you're gonna deglaze that <laughs> that pan with a cup of wine. Oh yeah, you're gonna use shallots. If you guys don't know what we're talking about. South Park episode, Crame Fresh. It's fucking awesome. It's pretty fucking funny. I get shit on all the time for it because his name's Randy. All the fucking time. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh my God, it's Gordon Ramsay. So funny. It's just Carmen. Fucking, <laughs> just chef coat like an asshole. So stupid. It's a great episode. That yeah, is. I got to watch that episode again. So, are we done with Espanol? Are we? I think so. I don't know. What's another dish other than... Gumbo. Gumbo. Oh. Beef bourguignon. Okay. Beef bourguignon. So, that um, chicken stock you made was kind of like an espanol. <laughs> yeah, it was dark as fuck. It know was know I mean? dark as fuck. Yeah, uh, that's just because I uh, heavily caramelized the uh, veg veggie doubles. Really? Yeah. How'd you caramelize the vegetables? Carefully. Oh, my God. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> I, my, was it on I, a pan or in the oven? No, I just fucking just... Let it not stir it that much. You know what I mean? Just got. The oh, you so you a little yeah. bit of oil in the pot. Yeah, you oh, okay. Take a whole right, right, of right. fucking carry gold. You fucking throw that bitch in there, and then you just like throw the veg in. You just let it sit. Carry gold butter. Yeah. Do you use my butter? No, I bought a pound. Oh. Yeah. You should have used my butter. Yeah. Yeah. Just trying to get rid of it. Yeah. You should eat a brick of it right now. <laughs> Did you see how many bricks I have? Yeah, dude? dude. Fucking just take a whole brick and just eat it. Nah, I'm, I'm all right. Come on, dude. That'd be fucking hilarious. I'll eat the salted one, not the unsalted. Just like, just a, oh, like a fucking bar of soap. You know what I mean? Get some sweet chili sauce, fucking dip it on the butter. No, oh, dude. Like, you, you eat it like a fucking apple. <laughs> so, it's funny. Now that you said that, this is sort of similar to what you just said, but uh, I love beets. And we roast a lot of beets at work for, we do a lot of beet salad. Fucking delicious with like goat cheese and fucking pine nuts and shit. But every time they roast beets, I grab a whole fucking beet and I eat it like a fucking apple because I love beets so much. And the way that the chef that roasts them, he does like the olive oil and the vinegar, vinegar and garlic and herbs and salt. Yeah. So they're fucking infused with flavor. And I eat that shit like an apple and I always get shit for it. They're like, the fuck is that? Are you eating? I'm like, it's a beet. They're like, are you just fucking like man fisting that beet? Is it a like red an beet? apple? Oh yeah, for it sure. is a red beet. Um, red beet and, and orange. I go, <laughs> I go one way out of the kitchen with the red, and then when I come back to go sit down at the desk to do menus and stuff, I'll get the fucking golden beet. Yeah. Have you ever eaten like a shitload of beets and then like the next day when you go to poop and then you're just like, dude, oh my god, am I dying? Dude, dude, one beet does that for me. Yeah, dude, and that's great. both like the front and the back. Yeah, dude, I'm like. Shit, am I dying? <laughs> the fuck. So great. You ever done a beet vinaigrette? No, but I've done a raspberry vinaigrette. So a beet vinaigrette, uh, I usually, when I have the uh, candy stripe beets and the uh, red beets, I'll take like um, 75% uh, candy scraps, and then I'll take the 25% uh, red scraps, and then I'll put them in a blender with a little bit of vinegar and uh, a little bit of uh, grapeseed oil. You know, I'm and then, pretty sure you talked about this in this last episode. Probably. <laughs> and it just makes that like bright pink shit and it's so fucking delicious yeah but yeah uh off topic but if you're making pickled red onions beets take a little piss piss <laughs> take a little piss <laughs> <laughs> take a little part of a beet and put it inside the jar that you're pickling 
and close it up after everything and let it go and it'll make your fucking red onions red as fuck and it won't add the beet flavor to the onions. Don't piss in your pickles. Yeah, don't piss in your pickles. <laughs> I fucking love pickles though, yeah, dude. So do I. All different types yeah. of pickles. Yeah. Your pickle. Yeah. Ooh, I really need to write down that recipe for bread and butter pickles. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Oh, there's like turmeric, mustard seed, uh, onions on top. So you just rice vinegar, pickles. seasoned apple cider, apple cider vinegar. vinegar. Yeah. yeah, and then just a fucking shit ton of onions on top and to hold the pickles down. Yeah, it was like uh, a one to one sugar fucking yeah. yeah, dude. But they were good. Yeah, they were fire, dude. They're fucking fire. Yeah, fucking fire. Yeah, fucking that shit's really good with fried uh, fried chicken. Absolutely, dude. Yeah, dude. Dude, yeah, dude. Bread and butter pickles with the onions and yep. the fucking fried chicken. Yeah. During the pandemic, I think I made your bread and butter pickle recipe. Yeah. And I made some fucking Nashville fried chicken, Nashville hot fried chicken. Fucking so good with a fu- I got a white piece of toast and fucking the pickles and the and it was yeah. literally toast or it was just the soft white bread, the fucking fried chicken with the Nashville all toss all over it and then fucking like two pieces of the bread and butter chips fucking smashed. I got to make that Vegas hot chicken again. It's all right. Yeah, you remember that? I do, yeah. yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Emulsification of uh, vinegar and oil with peppers. Yeah. So good. Would that be a variation of hollandaise? Hashtag hot mayonnaise. Fuck, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, that's like the important questions. Like, is cereal is a like soup? A, it is like a mayonnaise, though. Huh? Is cereal a soup? Is cereal a soup? Let us know down below. No, wait. <laughs> Send us some e- email. I don't know. Is cereal a soup? <laughs> Like, is it a soup? We are so know. fucking off topic right now. It's so funny. Yeah, and we still have to talk about tomato. Tomate. 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 <laughs> All right, so to- tomat is a exactly. final and fifth mother sauce. And, and do you know what it... Maybe not final. Uh, Auguste Escoffier will say different. You f- I mean, you're, the secret sixth one is Demi. Yeah, but isn't that just like a... Reduction. Yeah, but I mean, like, there's so many fucking things you can do with fucking Demi. I mean, is there, though? Demi means half. Uh, I mean, there's, like, fucking different variations and shit like that. Like, Yeah, but there's different variations of an Espanol. Jews and shit. Could a Demi technically be an Espanol? Without the gravy. But, I mean, it's like a reduction. That's how you get the thickness, not from the uh, yeah. actual additive. You're not adding anything. You're actually taking away. Right. Yeah. But anyways, uh, I digress. Tomatoes. Tomatoes. Tomato sauce. Do you know what tomatoes are? Uh, they're a fruit. They are a fruit. Yeah. And if you think otherwise, let us know. So uh, the way I learned the difference between knowledge and wisdom is... Uh, seeds or no seeds? No. <laughs> knowledge is knowing that tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put a tomato in a fruit salad. Cliche, but mm. yeah. Say that again? Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Okay. And wisdom is knowing not to put a tomato in a fruit salad. Sweet. Yep. I think we're going to quote that, post it on our page. Yeah, we should. Uh, anyways. Um, it's pretty much just tomatoes. Yeah. Did I? Did you want me to talk about uh, Co- it's how- It's like cooked down tomatoes. Pretty much just stewed the fuck out of them. Yeah. Yeah, you have to Put them for a shiller. food mill. Yeah. Fucking so good. But, uh, I mean, there's a shitload of variations and stuff like that that you can add to uh, tomato sauce. Um, did I ever tell you the story about uh, how- Italian started doing tomato sauce? No, chef, you did not. No, did you want me to tell that story? You I mean, can tell that story. All right. So, um, tomatoes actually originated in uh, South America. Um, so northern like Europe and all that shit had no idea about tomatoes until um, the Spanish actually came over and uh, started scoping all their doing their traveling shit, and uh, they brought tomatoes back when they um, met the uh, Native Americans and all that shit down below. And uh, Italians were like, this shit is great. And so they fucking added all that shit to uh, Italian food. And that's how Italians wind up getting tomatoes. Like a traditional bolognese actually doesn't have a, a lot of tomato. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Does the sauce. traditional bolognese have milk? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit of nutmeg. Is there, is there nutmeg? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I gotta look it up again, but yeah. Uh, traditional. Because there's nutmeg and milk, is it a bechamel? <laughs> just kidding absolutely not yeah uh yeah so um tomatoes are actually not that like old in italian cuisine interesting good to mm. know yeah. 
you know, fun fact about Italian food, there's not a lot of butter and cream. No, not really, no. It's a lot of olive oil and... and Shitload of olive oil. They use a lot of amazing ingredients. That's just... That's about it. Yeah. Also, I do apologize. I have a lot of really dumb cooking facts. That's okay. I like them. Yeah. I'm sure the, the audience likes them. Um, if you do like them, let us know if you like Randy's dumb food facts. Little FF fun fact for the day. Yeah. That's all. But yeah, Italian food. I know we're getting away from the French mother sauces, but Italian food's awesome. Like they do lots of olive oil. They use the starch water, the starch from the pasta when they cook it to help emulsify (laughs) the fats. Hashtag hot mayonnaise. (laughs) I knew you were going to say that. But you're taking like, you know, Parmesan and Pecorino Romano. For like a cacio e pepe, right? And you're emulsifying. What? Fuck you, dude. No, it's just the fact that I used to work at an Italian joint. And um, whenever we made uh, cacio de pepe, the uh, server would call out, fire caca pipi. <laughs> yeah, only you would laugh at that. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> but yeah, so it's an emulsification of that. And then the carbonara, that's just like a, what is that, a hot? Hot mayonnaise. Hot mayonnaise. So no. it's egg yolks, parmesan, and pasta water, and cracked pepper, and uh, the bacon fat from, well, not bacon fat, but pork fat from the um, guanciale. Oh, I love me some guanciale. Where can we get guanciale, bro? Because uh, it's hard to find. I might be able to get it at work because I got the hookup. Nice. So I can, I'll talk to a couple people and I'll make some connections I, and all that I shit. Th- I think the new, that newer uh, butcher shop. Uh, like Feather and Blade, I think it is. They're traditionally from n- England, and they used like traditional ways on butchering. So you can get different types of cuts that Americans aren't well, used to. Um, and I think they'll be able to get those types of meats. So um, you know the Thai place that we go to all the time, uh, Thai Spoon? You just dropped a name on our fucking spot, bro. We do that shit all the time. Yeah, I know, but that's our spot. Bro. Yeah, but I mean, that's like, me and you, bro. Yeah, like, there's a literally a butcher shop right next to it. Is it called Butcher Block? Yeah. I don't like Butcher Block. You don't like Butcher Block? They're okay. I mean, I can also just go to work and like there's an Italian place there that I can... Yeah. No, I mean, Butcher Block's okay. Yeah. yeah. But it, they got... They don't... The thing about these butcher places is they get prime rib just like we do. They get brisket just like we do. They get meat just like we do. And then they cut it down and serve it by the ounce or the slice for the most part. So it's not really a butcher shop. They're not getting in whole cows and half a pig and shit like that they're well, not i mean it's they, hard to actually it's hard to do that nowadays the people yeah. don't have the skill for that but i believe feather and blade does that and they bring in some pretty cool stuff and then i also like great western meat market so um there's also i can't remember the name of it for the life of me but on like uh, i think it's uh i want to say flamingo and eastern down in like the ghetto like i think it's like d'artagnan or some shit they uh do specialty stuff like uh I had a tasting at an upscale French place, and I had to get some Induja sausage for a pasta dish that I did. And um, what what did you just say? Induja. It's like a very. It's like a almost like a. Um, I thought you were mispronouncing Andouille. No, Induja. Uh, it's like I think it's. I want to say it's Middle Eastern. I don't know. Uh, I have to double check, but um, I, it's almost like a variation of like chorizo. Um, I used it for a um savory custard on a uh, gnocchi with scallops. Yummy. So um, that's what I use it for, and uh, that was the only place I can actually get it. They actually do like a, a bunch of like hard to get stuff, like um, certain vinegars and everything like that. And I'm pretty sure they have guanciale. We should talk about vinegars. Yeah, we should. I don't know about today. No, but I absolutely love vinegars. So do I. My favorite is apple cider. Yeah, I really like a good rice vine, uh, rice seasoned vinegar, and then a champagne vinegar. No, balsamic vinegar too. Champagne. Uh, tomato sauce. We're still doing that. Well, we, I mean, it's literally just boiled tomatoes. Yeah, boiled tomatoes. What do you use it for? What do you branch out from tomato? Tomato yes, in the French cuisine. I mean, if you're going to talk like an Espanol and a uh, tomato sauce, then you just, there's bolognese. Well, what, no, what branches off just from tomato? Just from tomato? Yeah. Just from tomato. Uh, dude, I'm drawing a hard blank on that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, you should just add tomatoes to everything. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Hashtag hot mayonnaise. Dude, I gotta go to the gym. I gotta go to the gym, too. Fucking, what the fuck, dude? It's 12 a.m. Yeah. I don't even know if my gym's open. No, mine is. 
It says 24 hours, Monday through Thursday, for whatever fucking reason. Well, today's Friday. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's been Friday as of two, two minutes ago, but 24 hours on... Th- yeah, see, it closes at 11 p.m. today. It's Friday. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. All right, let's wrap this shit up, big boy. Yeah. All right. Thank you for tuning in. This has been a wonderful episode. Of I think our motto is going to be uh, ranting because we like to rant, but it's just we're passionate about food and we love food. I said in the beginning, go ahead, like, share, comment, subscribe, share, tell, talk, you know. Hashtag hot mayonnaise. And then, yeah, start a trend. Hashtag hot mayonnaise and tag us in your uh, <laughs> in your Instagram posts on uh, on Instagram at behind the burner podcast.com or no on insta it's just at behind the burner podcast yeah so thank you guys let's get behind the burner thank you chef